Welcome to Linux Fundamentals Part 3, and we are going through a walkthrough of this room in Try Hack Me, uh, walkthrough study guide. Uh, let's get into it. My name is Ash. I'm going to be your teacher. I'm a former web designer and I'm learning cybersecurity. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get stuck into it. Uh, the first things first, let's go down to task two and hit start machine. Now, if you've been following along for the last two videos, uh, this is going to be a different environment. I am using the uh, Kali attack box that TryHackMe gives us. Um, so it's in the browser here. I've been having a little bit of issues with Windows Terminal and uh, I even tried VirtualBox and just no luck. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. If you have issues with WSL on Windows Terminal, please let me know. Uh, I've been having a few issues myself. Anyway, enough of a sob story. Let's get into it. Let's start uh, with the introduction here. So task one, introduction. Welcome to part three and the finale of the Linux fundamentals module. So far uh, throughout the series, you have got your hands on some fundamental concepts and use some important commands. This room is going to showcase some useful utilities and applications that you are likely to use day to day. If you use Linux day to day, that is. Uh, you're also going to advance your Linux foo skills uh, by learning about automation, package management, and service a uh, service application logging. Awesome. So by the time we've gone through that, we've got our IP. So let's go ahead and make sure we can see it on the network. Now I've noticed with the attack box, there's like a little bit of input delay. Um, so yeah, just got to get used to that. Um, Another reason why I like using Windows Terminal when it does work locally. Great, so we can see the box, so we can control C. So that was just pinging um, the uh, the machine, making sure that they can see each other. So uh, we will be um, following task two, deploy your Linux machine. Um, so we want to SSH and connect into this machine. So we want to go uh, uh, sudo SSH um, I don't think we actually need to use sudo because we're already root privileges. Um, so we're just going to go try hack me. So that's our user. So please give me privileges to connect um, and to log in as this user. Try hack me um, at this machine. Uh, control shift V will paste in from the clipboard. I'm um, used to control V. So got to use that. Yes, please establish the connection. The password is the same. Try hack me uh, written down just here so we definitely know we're going to the right place take a few seconds uh, it should be pretty fast i take it that they are on like the same network and uh, the same data center maybe not really sure uh awesome so that's work so we've connected now we can tell that we've connected by the welcome message etc but uh definitely that we've got try hack me different user and a different machine so definitely in the right place. Awesome, so that's task two. Let's move on to task three, terminal text editors. Now, I am gonna skip through this. I'm not gonna read everything 100%, so if you want to, pause and read at your own leisure. Otherwise, follow along. So throughout the series so far, we've used um, some text files to sort combinations of like echo command, pipe operators. Uh, so yeah, piping out um, into other things. But a better way to do things is our terminal text editors. So we've got nano and vim. Nano is much easier to get started with. Uh, these text editors, you know, can be likened to like Google Docs or Microsoft Word in, you know, just an introduction sense, uh, but they all built into the terminal. It's not like it opens up another application like, um, yeah. So vim is a little bit more um, dedicated, <laughs> like a little bit more involved. Um, I'm definitely not uh, there yet with vim. Um, so I just stick with nano. Uh, so let's go ahead and use it. So we'll create nano and we'll create something like file name or my file and let's do that together. So nano is just like every other command that we've been learning. So that's it's like, hey, Linux, can you please open this program? And now we need to pass through an argument, which in this case, we can just call my file. So it's, it's going to say, hey, nano, work on my file. If my file doesn't exist, create my file and we hit enter. And that's going to run us um, the program, Nano. So, hello there. We are in Nano. Awesome. Cool. So, Control-X 
will exit and it says hey do you want to actually save that hit y for yes enter and then it's like are you sure yes uh so we list out what we've got there and we've got my file Ooh, microsoft so um we can then cat out my file that we created concatenate can you please display hello there we are in nano look that's what we wrote very cool very cool Okay, so we can create a file through Nano and we can edit the text um, or edit the file itself. Cool, so uh, Control X and everything's there. Vim, a um, little bit more hardcore, I guess. Something that I'm going to do in the future. Promise. I, I will. I will. Uh, customizable high uh, syntax highlighting and yeah. So it's good because Nano might not actually be installed, whereas Vim works on all terminals where, yeah, Nano might not be. So it's good to learn Vim um, and I... We'll do it. We will do it. We'll do it together. Let's 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 do that together. Create a file using Nano. Yeah, we did that. Edit task three. So let's run. Um, so what was it? Yeah. So we've got task three there. So let's go Nano and verse task three, and hit enter. So that'll open up Nano, and we can see our flag here. Interesting. So let's just go and type that in because I'm scared to use Nano in case I um, stuff it up and do something wrong which is not the best uh mindset because we should be okay to stuff things up but i've just had so many errors recently i just want this to go smoothly okay <laughs> uh control x so that'll take us out otherwise we could have just cat um task three that'll work fine but we're, we're trying to use vim and i mean nano we're trying to use what yeah all right you get the point <laughs> so that's task three let's move on to task four so we're doing well, uh, general slash useful utilities. Awesome. Downloading files. Great. So we can use another, um, another command called wget. So let's man wget, which is for manual. So we're going to open up the manual page. So it reads the name is the non-interactive network downloader. So quick network downloader. Don't need to do much. We just need to say, hey, download, give it a link. That's it. So that's cool. Uh, all right, so we get, have an example here of what that looks like. So it's just wget and the link. Super simple, non-interactive, I mean, just like it says. So we'll give that a go in a sec. Um, then we have the SCP, which is the secure co uh, copy copy protocol, secure copy protocol, I think, that's running on SSH. So let's try that one, man SCP, and let's open that up. Um, open SSH secure file copy, okay? So a few different switches there, but um, we get the point. We, we, we get it. Q to exit that one. Great. Um, so we do need to pass through a couple of commands, uh, a couple of arguments, sorry, to get that working. So let's scroll on down. So curl is another one, by the way. Um, and we're going to be running Python 3 in a web server. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Um, and then we're going to be downloading a file. So just to give you an idea of what's going on, if you hit ls... Uh, for list dash l a uh, so list everything in a list format and a for all um, there's actually a file on our system here flag.txt so that's hidden and that's owned by the root so we can't see it we like we can see it there but we can't see what's inside it so it's from the root so we're actually going to start up a web server so that we can download that from ourselves um, and then it becomes our a copy of that file which is the copy is then our file and we can read it i think that's what's happening awesome i hope you know what's going on so let's run this python 3 here so python 3 dash m and http dot s r v e r for server so that's going to run up a mini um web server cool it's doing its thing Okay, so then if we scroll down here, so ensure you're connected. Yeah, we're connected. Have you used that? Yeah, we just did. Yay. And it's like, hey, download this file. So this is the hidden text file that's owned by root. So let's copy that. And um, going back to the terminal, if we could control Z, that's going to throw that in the background, which is cool. So we can get our terminal back. So it's still running. So let's just go W get. So please download and then control shift V will paste in that link that we just copied from over there. Hit enter and that's gonna go, hey, I need to connect. I need to, I need to ask for permission. Make sure that we go there. And I'm sort of now hoping that the fact that I put it in uh, a stopped mode that I haven't stuffed it up. 
So, because it should be pretty instant. I'm just going to be patient. I'm just going to be patient. I've had a lot of errors. Uh, I'm just going to be patient. Maybe I just need to wait. I'm getting impatient. I can't wait. Okay, I'm going to hit Control C. Going to stop that. I'm going to go FG, um, which is going to bring back the last uh, process that we put in the background. So we're going to bring that out. I don't like where it went. So I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to end that. And then we're just going to clear the terminal with the clear command. So what we're going to do is we're going to run uh, this again. I'm just going to cheat and copy paste this. Copy, paste, enter. Instead of putting in the background, which I thought would work fine, I'm instead just going to open up a second terminal, which I think I can just do this by open tab. So Control Shift T, Control Shift T. That is on the wrong thing. Control Shift T. Ah, it's for me browser. It's the same hotkey. I will be clicking. Okay, so we'll just need to quickly SSH back in. So if you want to skip to the next part, feel free to while I just get this sorted. So we're just going to sudo SSH um, try hack me. And we're going to do that to this guy. And we are going to use the, ooh, I spelled that wrong. Try hack me is the password. It's weird reading out passwords. We shouldn't do that, but in this case, it's all the same. Cool. So I'm going to clear this and then I'm going to attempt to use wget again. So let's go copy link. We'll go wget uh, space paste that in. I'm just going to go check that the server is still running and we're going to hit back on the other tab. We're going to hit enter and we're going to, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> awesome. LS. Um, so remember that it is hidden. So we need to use that dash a, um, to see all. And we've now got flag dot text dot one. Um, so I might actually use the L switch just so we can see everything. So we've copied over this file here and now the copy is set to us, uh, the user. So we can actually see it. So it's not root anymore. So that's kind of cool. Um, so what we can do is cat out the flag. So make sure you use the period at the front because it is a hidden uh, file. Flag.txt.1. Bum, 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 bum. There's no such thing as that. Uh, okay, that's fine. Let's problem solve live um, because I thought that would work. Uh, there is, um, we have read write access to it. Um, how do we concatenate? Um, let's just. Can we just run it? Um, we might, I don't, I, okay. I'm just totally riffing here. I'm not even sure if this is going to work. I'm going to give it executable like we would with bash script because that's what I know what to do, but I'm just not really sure if that's actually going to do it. Um, T X T dot one. So what's going on here? We have copied over this flag, but it is like um, it still can't see it, which is really interesting. Um, I'm forgetting the dot. That's all it is. I'm just forgetting the dot. Um, man, you know, this is a good lesson. Sometimes I just rush things and I'm just not thinking. Dang it. I think I forgot the dot again. Welcome to learning Linux. But things go wrong all the time. We got it. Got to be honest, that one nearly had me. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. <laughs> okay. Control Shift C. I'm going to paste it over here. Hit submit. We got there. So a couple things, just make sure you have the period before. Um, so it's telling it's in that directory and then having that period after um, to make sure it's showing the hidden uh, file, which is that full thing. So little things, man, this, this is, this is what learning Linux is. This is, this is what it is. 
Alrighty, um, task five now. All right, let's see. Let's see how we can we can keep this up. Uh, processes one hundred and one. Oops. Processes are the programs that are running on your machine. It's gonna pause on that for one sec. So we have a program. Okay, we understand the concept of a program like an application. If that program is in the state of running, it is known as a process. So sort of like when you open task manager on Windows, you've got processes. So they are all just programs in the state of running. Programs are still processes. Processes are still programs. Programs are just in the state of running processes. Crazy. Um, so they're managed by the kernel, which each process will have its own ID associated with it, um, which is known as a PID. Uh, the increments are in order of which the process starts. The 60th process will have the PID of 60. Sort of makes sense, right? Uh, so let's use a command here. So I'm just going to clear this terminal. So PS um, is going to show us some commands um, or processes, sorry, that are running. So we've got bash and then the PS that we just ran. So is that is that really it? Is that really it? So we can do a couple of more switches. But before we go ahead, let's just manual page the PS just so we can read it, see what um, it's just it's just a good habit. Report a snapshot of the current processes. So interesting. It doesn't give us like it's not like task manager is not live. We'll look at another one in a second. But this is just showing a quick report, just a quick snapshot of what's going on in the machine. So PSAUX is what we can put after and we can get some more. So we'll read down here, see the process run by other users. Those don't have uh, run from a same session that then we can see all the other processes. So this makes a little bit more sense, right? Um, like when we look at this machine and we're like, ah, okay, yeah, there's a lot more going on. So root is a user, the default, like most high privileged user. So root starts up and has its own set of programs to start running. And these are the programs or processes that uh, make our system work. Um, scrolling up and down on this is super slow. So I'm going to try and not do that. Um, so the other one that I sort of alluded to is TOP, top. So this is much more like what we would be used to where that, um, that live update rather than just a snapshot. Here we can actually see the uptime changing, the numbers of changing things are getting updated in real time. So TOP for that, which is quite cool. So we can press like Q or anything to get out of there. So let's just man TOP just to see that manual page, see that first description. Um, so we've got display Linux processes, pretty normal, right? Uh, so the top program provides a dynamic real-time view of running system. Cool. All right. I, I understand that. that. That makes sense. I hope that's making sense to you too. So I'm going to hit Q just to quit out of that. So managing processes. So we can actually kill a process. So if we just started something up, um, so let's just run like a little netcat um, dash LP. So NC dash LP. So this is just going to be a little netcat that's just running like so. Um, and that's going to be so that's running. So we just started up a little little set listening port. So I'm gonna hit control Z just to throw that in the background. Um, so what we can do is hit PS. So we can see what we've started. And we can see here the second entry is um, that program that we just started NC for netcat, which is another program we can talk about another time. Um, it has a PID of 1394. So that's its that's its yeah, it's an ID number. Okay, so here we says we can kill the ID number. We can kill it. So one three nine four is that number. Let's kill it. So if we don't see anything, it, it, then we we can assume it's done its job. Um, so if we go FG to bring back on the foreground, so we're going. We put the netcat. We put in the background. So we want to bring it back to the foreground with FG. Uh, so we can hit that and enter and. It said, hey, I tried, but it's been terminated. We got it. <laughs> we killed it. Uh, so we hit PS again. Um, the, the NC's gone. We, we killed it. Uh, so yeah, you can do that with any process that you start. So if you um, open VPN and you know it's stuck in the background, you can find the PID and you can kill it. So if you 
I mean, even that web server that I started, I think, is still running on this other tab. Yeah, so I mean, I, mean, I can just hit Control C and kill it that way. Um, but yeah, interesting, right? So let's continue on. So how do processes start? So you can do a bit of reading about the system D. Really interesting, really important. Please do go over it. Um, I'm just going to skip it for a matter of time. Um, getting process and services to start on boot. So using the system CTL. Uh, so super important. This is how we can, let's actually man system CTL. So this is another command or another program that helps us, the user, control system D, system and service manager. So it's a way of having control over the state of our system, basically. Um, so yeah, g giving us just easier in interaction with important yeah, aspects of, of our machine. I think I've made that clear as mud. <laughs> okay. Um, an introduction to backgrounding and foregrounding. So we've actually been doing a little bit of that. In fact, um, the difference here though is that and. So it's something that I think we have used. So if we were to um, just follow this like, uh, hi, try hack me. And then we run that ampersand or and symbol. Um, that's going to run the command in the background. So we're not going to actually see the result of that echo, which would have just been hi, Tim. Um, funny enough, it still sort of comes through. So it's like it did put it in the background, but it comes through. So that's that sort of weird. Um, otherwise, using that control Z, which we've been using already, uh, is there. So that's really good. So control C is something that will, you know, actually kill. Or like it will interrupt. Um, whereas control Z will tell it, hey, put it in the background. Continue, but put it in the background. But as I'm learning, and I'm trying to get more familiar with it. Sometimes it does stop some things like it did with the web server. So I guess there are some caveats with it. So yeah, more to learn, more to learn. There's always something more to learn. Uh, foregrounding process um, is that FG command. Um, so let's actually man out that FG so we can see what is going on. Um, no manual entry for FG. Interesting. So you might find that with um, some, some commands. So you can always run dash dash help and usually you'll have something. So I guess FG is such a small um, like program that doesn't need much besides a little help page. It says move job to foreground, place the job identified by job underscore spec in the foreground, making it the current job. Okay, that's gonna be the smallest help page ever, but I guess FG is a pretty small program. Cool. All right, let's go down. Read me, we've ba basically read most of it. If we were to launch a process where the previous ID was 300, what would the ID of this new process be? So remember going back up to the top, it told us that the PIDs somewhere um, start after the other. So the 60th process will be the uh, PID of 60. So we could assume that 300 would be 300 and the next one would be 301. Cool. Uh, if we wanted to cleanly kill a process, what signal would we send it? So I use the example of kill, but that might not be a clean way of getting rid of a process. Uh, if we go back up here somewhere, uh, so blow up some signals that we can send to a process when it's killed. So we can kill the process, but allow it to do some cleanup tasks beforehand. Okay, sounds pretty clean. Uh, we can SIG kill, kill the process, doesn't do any cleanup after the fact. SIG stop, stop, un, or slash suspend. So I'm going to give it to this guy, um, SIG term, kill the process, and let it do some cleanup. So that sounds like a clean way. So in case something was in the middle of trying to, uh, a program was running something, you could do it the clean way. Nice. To locate the process that is running on a deployed instance of this, what flag is given? Okay, we have we have a little bit of a hunt on our hands. Interesting. So let's use the commands that we know. PS. Um, so it could be one of these. Um, let's have a look at PS AUX. I think that's probably better because this is we're looking at um, basically everything. Uh, so this is a bit difficult for me to go through. Uh, because I've got um, 
bit of a delay. So, a good way around when we need to get through um, a lot of information or search through it. I don't know if you remember grep from the previous videos or the previous rooms if you've done them. So, what we can actually do is PSAUX and I'm going to assume that they're using the same, like just from looking here, the, the same flag format, so THM and curly braces. I mean, I actually just spotted it here. <laughs> but I'm going to continue with this and pretend like I don't know where it is. Um, so I'm still going to PUS AUX, but I'm going to do a pipe symbol, pipe it through grep, and then just do a search term for THM uh, and enter that. So that's going to search through everything, find the pattern of THM, and then uh, there's only two processes. So if I didn't see that, um, then I, this is a much better way of finding it, basically. Control Shift C to copy that from the terminal. Control V over there to submit it. Great. So what command would we use to stop the service my service? What command would we use to stop the service my service? Um, so, for services that are running, we want to use the system CTL. Uh, so, I did sort of skip over this, so this might not be exactly crystal clear. So, let's have a look. We can use system CTL. We've got start, stop, enable, disable. So, let's try, if we're trying to start up my service, so we were going to use system CTL, we would definitely, I mean, just logically, right, be using the start my sir this. Uh, I'm going to go on the limb and say this is something that we would definitely do. Can I please copy you? Let's have a look. Do we get it right? No. System CTL start my service. Um, oh, stop. <laughs> Whoops. Got it. Nice. <laughs> All right. If I can learn to read, then I might actually make it through this. What command would we use to start the same service on boot up? So for boot up, uh, we actually use enable. Uh, and if we didn't want it to boot up, we would use disable. Uh, so in this case, the same service. So we would need system CTL, uh, except we would use enable my service. And man, I'm so good at spell imaging. Great, so enable is definitely what we're after there. So what command would we use to bring previously backgrounded process uh, back to the foreground? Well, that was definitely FG, right? That was a little one that we had um, about foregrounding, so FG. Nice, all right, so a couple of things that, you know, trick, trip me up a little bit. So I hope you've learnt through me making this sex. So it's what it's all about. Um, all right, let's move on to task six, maintaining your system automation. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So users may want to schedule a certain action or task to take place after a system has booted. So we can use something that is called cron and cron tabs. So let's look up the man page for C-R-O-N uh, and let's see what we've got here. Uh, Damien to execute scheduled commands. So that's the focus here, scheduled commands. So if you want to run something, you can even see here we've got minute, hour, uh, DOM, so what day of the month, MON for what month of the year, DOW for what day of the week, CMD, the actual command that's going to be executed. Mmm, pretty cool. So you can see how this is uh, pretty powerful. Got to admit, I'm not a master with the the old cron tab, it's something that uh, definitely have got on the list to improve. So ensure that you're connected to deploy's machine. Yeah. So when will the cron tab on the deployed instance run? So we're looking up, it's a little bit of another hunt on the cron tabs. So if we go back here, we've got cron tabs can be edited using cron tab dash E. So any cron tabs that we have on the system are gonna be in this file. Uh, so this is just a pre-programmed way of opening up this file. Um, uh, it's just built in. So that's going to open up Nano, the default editor, and we can just use the down arrow key to go all the way down. And we only have one cron tab. So this doesn't say anything about um, like the day or the time. The only time that is got in here is at reboot. 
So what we can actually do if we're like, is this our thing? Because I was looking on the forums and some people were a bit confused and I got to admit, I was super confused too. Um, so let's actually look up this right here. Uh, let's go to this. Can I just right click and go copy? Thank you, terminal, terminal emulator. Uh, let's go over to this tab and let's actually just cut out this file. So if you're unsure, like, I mean, this is kind of built in um, to us. Uh, da -da -da -da, no such file or directory. Um, so let's try that again. Um, we have definitely got something there. So let's CD over to VAR slash OPT. Um, and then let's LS and list out what we've got. So we've got to try hackme.sh. Ah, so it's different. So let's try and cat out try hackme.sh, hit the tab key, and we've got a interesting, we've got a little bash script here that re repeats here's your flag five times, and there's the flag. So I think we can actually, if we just LS, um, dash L and against try hack me. So we actually just see we have permission to execute it. So cool. So we can just hit the current folder and the path to that file and we can run it and we can actually see it uh, there. So all I'm trying to do is just illustrate that this has been set up for us. So we, if we weren't sure if this is what we were looking for, taking the time to go and look, look up what is there. Well, this is, yeah, this is what we're after. So we're, we're in the right area. Um, so this is actually our answer. If we go back and it's like, Hey, when will the cron tab? Well, I mean, this is, it doesn't feel like a time, but I guess every time it reboots, then yeah, that would be the time. Sweet. Cool. So, uh, we've got task seven now. Task seven is maintaining your system package management, introducing packages and software repos. So this is an important part um, and we use the APT in Ubuntu and I, Kali has got APT. So these are different, uh, the way I sort of think about package managers is like different app stores. Um, so you've got like the Android app store, you've then got like the Apple app store um, for different like operating systems. But there's actually like heaps of other app stores out there. Um, so yeah, you can sort of, I sort of think about like software repos as that, they're just sort of repositories or places or marketplaces, uh, sort of. I mean, it's not exactly, but that's sort of just how I think about it. Uh, so we can use like APT, we can add repositories. Personally, I've not have actually had to do that. I just use the default repositories to install. Um, so what's sort of funny about this is we can't actually do any of it. Uh, so you can just read that. But I encourage you to go do it on your local machine uh, in your own time. So that takes us over to task eight, maintaining your system logs. And it shows an example of an Apache 2 uh, web server running. And we've got different uh, s s processes that are running on the system. And you can see in the log file. So it's actually kind of cool. So let's go down to the questions here. And we've got look for the Apache 2 logs on your deployed Linux system. Interesting. So we've got here an example of where the logs are. So let's go and change directories with the CD. And let's go over to VAR slash log. I'm going to hit enter on that and then let's just give it an LS and just see what's here. Cool. So we've got an Apache 2, uh, Amazon Apache or Apache Apache. I uh, got kernel system logs. So yeah, the authentication logs, alternative logs. So yeah, there's, there's a little bit going on. So what is the IP address of the user who has visited the site? Ooh, interesting. So can we see anything? Let's let's actually list this out in LA. It just helped my brain see things a little bit easier. Waiting, waiting. There we go. Uh, so do we have anything that we think would be of interest to us? Uh, I guess there's the Apache 2. Um, so we could try that. So I thought we were looking for an access log. So let's try and cat out 
the Apache 2. Oh, that's a directory. Silly me. We need to actually go into that directory. We need to go Apache change directories into there so we can actually see because this is a web server so the logs for the web server are going to be in here smart so ls and now we have access logs make sure we're in the right place so the ip address of the user who has visited the site so let's look up um i'm just going to go ls dash la so i can see this in a easier to read format and we can get a little bit more information so let's try and look at catting out the access log. So access log hitting enter. Can we read it? Permission is denied. Damn. What if we looked up dash one, a uh, dot one rather? We've, we have an entry. Awesome. So we can see this one. Uh, so it looks like on the 4th of May, may the 4th be with you, 2021, we had somebody access catsanddogs.jpg. Okay, so we're looking for the IP address of this user. So an IP address has got uh, two to three, or one to three digits, dot one to three digits, dot one to three digits. So yeah, four um, here. So th this is our IP address for this user. So we can go ahead and copy that and hopefully we've got the right thing for the right place. Mm, awesome. Uh, and we have a question here, what file did that? Oh, well, I actually did see that. So we have catsanddogs.jpg. Sweet, so we can just copy that, paste that in and submit. Awesome. Um, and if I click that one, we go on to task nine, which is our conclusions and summaries. Uh, welcome to the end of the Linux Fundamentals module. Well done. We actually got there. Uh, so that's it. All three parts are done. We've got continued learning. Um, some recommendations is try hack me the find command, bash scripting, and cat rejects, regular expressions. So these are some rooms that I've got on my to-do list. So hopefully you enjoyed this and you want to see some more. Uh, if you do, let me know. That'd be great. If you want to see parts one and two, uh, that will be coming up next. Well done, congratulations, we made it. Uh, feels good, had lots of errors, even well in this video, uh, yeah, had to do some problem solving, but hey, that's all part of the learning process. We're, we're learning, so let's keep learning. Uh, enjoy your learning Linux journey, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.